Now let's go ahead and try to take advantage of bootstrap so that things look decent. Not really very fantastic, but decent, decent. Okay, so I hope you have added the bootstrap CDN and let's go ahead and give it a try. I want to remove this H1. First and foremost, we're gonna add some of the styling and then we're gonna learn how to iterate over it. So let's go ahead and have it. So div dot container. Did I wrote it correct? Nope, container, there we go. Okay, once inside the container, Bootstrap actually divides, likes to divide everything inside the row. So first and foremost, we're gonna have just a row for text. So let's just say we are gonna have inside the row, we're gonna have a column of all width. And we, we're gonna just say view crash course. Yep, that's all good enough. I'll go outside of this row. I'll create another row. So let's just say div dot row. And this row is gonna have uh, something just a text. So let me have a paragraph which is gonna say add create form. We haven't created the form yet so this is just a reminder that we gotta do this uh, but we're gonna do this later on. Right now we don't need to do it. Okay final one so we're gonna say div dot row and inside this row let's have a column. So column is gonna be uh, 12 width all of it so let's just say all width and we're gonna say that on the large screen, we just want to give you six, so there we go. Inside this, we're gonna have an unordered list with a class of list dash group. Again, all of these classes are coming up from Bootstrap. I had nothing, nothing to do it with if it is. Now inside this, we can have a whole lot of list items. So let's go ahead and add just one list item. When I have a list item, I'm gonna say the test all in caps. As soon as I save this, uh, I see I see the test here. So the one test is actually coming in. And I think we are going very, very uh, lower on these H1s. I think we should wrap this up, at least this one into a H1. Or let me show you another class. In the paragraph, we're gonna add this one. And we're gonna have a display three class of display three. I think that's gonna be really, really big. Yep, that's nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more to it, just bear with me. So this is hello from YouTube Crash Course. Uh, I'm gonna just put up an H there so that we know that things are loading up nicely, but still I'm having it. So there we go. Add a create form is here, test is here. So now the next thing is, how do we iterate over the data? So come back in here, instead of this li test, we want to iterate through this to do's. So we're gonna inject something which is coming up from the view. View, as soon as I type in inside, I go inside the list item and I put up a V inside, I put up a V. You might be noticing V bind clock, else, else if for HTML, if model. So these are very, very similar what you see in the Angular, but for those who are not aware of it, these are the special uh, dynamic bindings that you can do with the attributes and then it's gonna act almost like you see, like you see in PHP or something like that. So. I'm gonna go ahead and use for, simply because I have an array and I want to loop through it. Whenever you want to loop through it, you just use the parenthesis and you just say in to do's, just like this. This is the syntax. This is gonna go through with every single to do that you have and will also give you an access to index. Access to index is really, really important in this case because not only this, you need to add a bit more property to this. One of the property is key. Why we are having a key here? Because Sometimes this might get you confusion that, hey, you might be repeating over the same object again and again. Key makes it sure that, no, I'm not repeating over the same object. Here's the proof that I'm not repeating over the same object. This is a unique object every single time. Okay, and uh, we are gonna grab a simple index here. Usually I like to do it through the IDs, but in this case, I don't have much of the choice here. I'm gonna remove the test here. I'm gonna just go ahead and add couple of curly braces and I'm gonna just say to do dot and to do string there we go as soon as I save this go back and check and I can see all the hard-coded values are now being displayed in front of me okay makes sense makes sense let's go ahead and have enter couple of enters here there we go but this is not all about it. I want to pass on bit more data on it. So if I want to pass on more data, come on, why you go on the same line again? If I want to give it more data to it, my other component should be ready to accept that data. So let's go ahead and create that other component that we are having. 
let's right click on this and this one is going to be individual to do so i to do for individual to do or just to do dot view is going to be fine the same stuff goes on we go ahead and grab the template we go ahead and grab the script and we finally have the style there we go okay now a couple of things that you have to actually do it here first we're going to do it up here and then we're going to do it we need to actually import this to do in our to do list so let's go ahead and just grab an h1 and we're going to simply say to do single let's just say that now we need to import this first and foremost how do we import it it's exactly the same how you thought it first and foremost we're going to say import we're going to simply say to do you're going to be coming up from in the same directory we are calling this one as to do yep that's the one and we have to register that as well so i'll come at the very top and i'll say components just like this and i have to register this to do and make sure you put up a comma as well otherwise it's going to complain a lot so to do is now available and i want to use it so instead of this list item now i can use this one here so i'm going to simply say to do like this and we don't need the ending one now we can remove this one in fact we can remove all of it and uh, i can just make it a self-closing one there we go did i wrote it correct i don't think so let's save it and test it out no i didn't wrote it correctly so let's give it a command z a couple of times so that we can see where am i missing it okay so yep uh, this is the one that we actually need to write the to do like this so what we're going to do is we're going to simply say to do we don't need to now display the string and we are going to remove all of this yep that's now accurate and there we go okay so this is going nicely so far but now there are issues previously we were able to display it because we were having it now it just says to do single multiple times so somehow we need to pass on information in this to do there are two things we need to pass on information and this to do should be ready to accept that information so how we're going to do that let's go ahead and let me tell you that there are a couple of properties that you can mention it doesn't really necessary that always it has to be key or reference or slot you can mention these prop however you like so for example i'm going to call this one as to do string come on that not that one to do string and the value of that to do string is going to be coming up from to do dot to do string so you can mark it you can mark your properties however you like there is another one which is completed and which is going to be coming up from to do dot completed okay we are 100 percent passing on this information but my to do dot view is not yet accepting it so that is why it says hey i don't know how to display it or where to display it that's why it says hey you just asked me to loop through multiple times i'm doing it but i'm not going to display the data because i'm not instructed to do it so okay so there we go we have learned quite a lot in this very small video so let's keep it up here only till here now let's go ahead in the next video we are gonna define this to do in a way that it can accept the data or the props which i'm passing it on here let's go ahead and catch up in the next video